Russians protest Putin's military mobilization, Zelensky urges just punishment. U.S. and European leaders on Wednesday swiftly condemned Russian President Vladimir Putin's decision to call up as many as 300,000 reservists in his war against Ukraine, a move that sparked protests across Russia and soaring demand for one-way flights out of the country. Speaking to the UN General Assembly, President Biden accused Putin of attempting to extinguish Ukraine's right to exist, and Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said his citizens demand just punishment for Russia's actions during the war. Hey race the latest on the war and its ripple effects across the globe. Key Developments Putin's partial military mobilization represents a major escalation in the war after Moscow suffered embarrassing setbacks, including a retreat from the Kharkiv region in northeastern Ukraine. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said the mobilization reflects the Kremlin's struggles on the battlefield, the unpopularity of the war, and Russians' unwillingness to fight in it. Thousands of Russians took to public spaces to protest after Putin's announcement, with authorities making at least 1,300 arrests in a single day, according to the human rights group OVD Info. Video footage from rallies across the country shows police officers pushing protesters to the ground, stuffing them into buses and, in at least one instance, attempting to punch an apparent protester in the head on a busy street. Two U.S. military veterans and three British men fighting in Ukraine were among the nearly 300 people released Wednesday as part of an elaborate prisoner exchange between Moscow and Kiev. The deal, brokered by Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, also led to the release of 215 Ukrainians and 55 Russians. Viktor Medvedchuk, a pro-Kremlin opposition politician from Ukraine who is considered a close friend of Putin's, was also released. Bridget Brink, the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, thanked the Ukrainian government early Thursday for securing the Americans' release, and said in a tweet, My thoughts this morning are with the released POWs, and with their loved ones. Zelensky's passionate appeal to the UN General Assembly on Wednesday focused on his desire for peace and just punishment for Russia. He proposed a five-part peace formula, which included requests he has made publicly before, such as sanctions against Russia, visa restrictions for Russian citizens and additional defense and financial support for Ukraine. Battleground Updates Five people were injured and at least one person died in overnight strikes on the city of Zaporizhia, Regional Governor Alexander Sterik said Thursday on Telegram. Residential buildings were destroyed by rockets, he said, adding that the extent of the damage was still being clarified. Kirill Tymoshenko, deputy head of the Ukrainian president's office, said nine rockets hit a hotel, trapping people under the rubble. He said a power station was also struck, leaving people in the south of Zaporizhia without electricity. Mykolaiv, in southern Ukraine, was subjected to massive rocket fire overnight into Thursday, Vitaly Kim, the regional governor, said. While no one was injured or killed in the strikes, which largely came in the form of S-300 anti-aircraft missiles, residential and government buildings were damaged, as well as gas and water pipes, a cinema and a theater, Kim said. Air raid sirens were reportedly still ringing around 10 a.m. local time. Russia is likely to struggle with the logistical and administrative challenges of even mustering the 300,000 personnel, Britain's Ministry of Defense said Thursday following Putin's announcement of a partial military mobilization. The ministry assessed that those called up to serve are unlikely to be combat effective for months. Moscow-backed officials in occupied parts of Ukraine announced plans this week to hold referendums from Friday to Tuesday on the prospect of joining Russia. The moves indicate an escalation in Russia's apparent plans to annex swaths of Ukraine. The votes would be illegal under Ukrainian and international law. Global Impact EU foreign policy chief Josep Borrell denounced Russia's plans for the next phase of the war, vowing at an emergency meeting of the bloc's foreign ministers that EU members would increase EU military support to Ukraine and study a new set of sanctions against Russia. Burrell condemned Russia's plan to stage sham referendums, as well as Putin's plan for partial military mobilization. At the UN General Assembly, 
President Biden accused Putin of irresponsible nuclear threats and reckless disregard for the responsibilities of the nonproliferation regime, hours after Putin warned in his speech that Russia might use nuclear weapons if threatened. Biden also rebuked Russia's invasion in general, saying, This war is about extinguishing Ukraine's right to exist as a state, plain and simple, and Ukraine's right to exist as a people. Whoever you are, wherever you live, whatever you believe, that should make your blood run cold. North Korea has denied claims that it exported weapons or ammunition to Russia and said it has no plans to do so, according to a statement released Thursday by the government-run Korean Central News Agency. A U.S. official, speaking on the condition of anonymity about a newly declassified intelligence report, told the Vasington Post this month that Moscow was suffering from severe supply shortages and was preparing to buy millions of rockets and artillery shells from Pyongyang. From our correspondence. As mobilization begins in Russia, sold-out flights, protests, and arrests, within hours of Putin's speech declaring a partial military mobilization, men all over Russia started receiving written notices and phone calls summoning them to duty, writes Post reporter Mary Ilyashina. The men, mostly reservists under age 35, spoke to Ilyashina on the condition of anonymity about receiving the calls they had been dreading for months. Meanwhile, Google search trends showed a spike in queries like how to leave Russia and even how to break an arm at home, as protests erupted in some cities and an online petition against mobilization, initiated last spring, suddenly had more than 292,000 signatures.